Hey, welcome back on the journey. Uh, so, what have I learned in 80 days of being here in the Philippines? Let's jump into it. Traffic. I knew that traffic was going to be uh, congested before I came here. And yeah, it is. When you live in the metro area, you've got a lot of people that are on the roads day and night. So traffic has been one of the big concerns of mine. And it, it's not as dangerous as what it may appear. You know, people merge. There's a lot of give and take. And you learn to live with it. Uh, motorcycles and scooters outnumber cars by far. There are a lot of scooters. And there's a reason for that. And most of these scooters are in the 125 to 155 cc range. Uh, you'll get bigger ones, uh, but really when you're in the metro area, the lighter the scooter and the smaller, the better you can maneuver in and out of traffic. And they do. Um, it's easier to park a bike than it is a car. Uh, there's very limited parking spots available and a bike can get in uh, to a lot tighter sp uh, space and park. Cars, not so much. Uh, like I said, parking areas are very limited here. Most of the time I've been, uh, we've been using grabs and public transportation, mainly grabs, and I'll get to those a little bit later. Um, it's much easier to let someone else do the driving and deal with the traffic. And for the cost, I think it's worth it in the end. Uh, we don't go out unless we have to, so there's that. The reason there's so many bikes other than the uh, getting around easier and parking easier is bikes are relatively cheap here. Uh, brand new bike you could probably get for around 3000 on up, uh, maybe even less for a used one, but uh, for basically $200 down payment, you can go and finance a bike uh, or you can pay cash. Uh, like I say, it's a lot cheaper than buying a car and it's a whole lot better fuel economy. Gas is running roughly five or 450 to 475 a gallon uh, with the US equivalent on dollars. Uh, 59 pesos per liter is about an average price here. And you figure it out 3.78 liters per gallon and 55 pesos per dollar. So you, you do the math, you can figure out it's about 450 to 475. A bike will go much farther on. Uh, 3.78 liters of uh, gas than a car will. So that's why uh, scooters outnumber bikes by far. It's a lot cheaper, a lot easier to get around, a lot easier to park. But traffic is still an issue. And if you come to a metro area, be prepared for it. I've heard people complain about Cebu, Metro Manila, some of the other cities. Uh, just be prepared for that living accommodations. So most of the houses, condos, townhouses are much smaller than what Westerners are accustomed to. Uh, we're currently living in a 42 square meter, two bedroom condo. That's what we're renting. It's much smaller than say a two bedroom apartment in the US. Uh, most of those probably run 600 square feet or more. And this one here, 42 square meters, roughly 450 square feet. Uh, we make do. Uh, you learn to live on a minimalist uh, lifestyle. And to me, that, that suits me fine. My big old uh, 260 square meter house, uh, a little over 2,800 square feet, uh, is way more house than what I need. It's nice bragging rights, things like that. But do you really need that? So living accommodations are going to be uh, less. Uh, most of your condos around here are running between 40 to 60 square meters, and that's for, uh, say, a two bedroom, uh, three bedroom. 
Yeah, they can cram three bedrooms into 60 square meters. Uh, they do it all the time. I've looked at a lot of townhouses, uh, three bedroom at 50 square meters. Yeah, the rooms are really tiny, uh, about the size of a closet back in the US. Um, but when you compare the costs and things, uh, if you're buying one, you're going to look at probably 5.5 or more. Uh, that's uh, 5.5 million or more. That's roughly 100,000. That's for a condo, uh, townhouse, you can get those for a little less. Um, we looked at one, it was 52 square meters. I think it's 1.5 million, relatively ch uh, cheap. Uh, but again, it's gonna be very cramped. Uh, houses are probably going to be between 80 to 135 square meters. Uh, if you're gonna try and stay under 10 million budget, that's 180,000 US. They could be as low as 4.5 million. Uh, a little less than a hundred thousand uh, five point five million is is roughly a hundred thousand u s so houses uh, are not going to probably have a yard for the in that price range um, the houses take up the entire lot uh, any exposed space probably concreted uh, I'm kind of a grass and and trees kind of guy so I've been looking and yeah, it's been a little frustrating sometimes. How much yard do I need? Let me walk around the house. Uh, most of these houses, uh, the walls of the house are part of the fence. Uh, these are sometimes like three meter high fences, uh, 10 feet high. And that's the walls of the house. So that tells you that the house fills up the lot. And if you want to go more than that, uh, say more than uh, 130 square meters and you want a lot that's bigger than say 150 square meters you might have some yard but be prepared it'll be over 10 million pesos on most cases especially in a metro area if you go out in the provinces um, or in the rural areas you can probably get a lot more land a lot more house for a lot less so it depends on what your what your lifestyle is. If you want a metro area, be prepared for houses close in, and not much different than a uh, than a townhouse, except for more room. Uh, townhouses, you're going to see a lot more of those going up as they try to build uh, more on less space. Kitchens, okay, it's been said Filipinos like to cook. I just don't know how they do it. Uh, most of the kitchens that I've seen are just basically a sink and a very small one meter counter. Uh, it's not very much. Where do they cook? Now, in a condo, you probably get an induction cooker and a rice cooker, and there you go. Or some that are owned by Westerners, if you're, uh, if you're renting, they may have a stove and an oven. Uh, I know the one Airbnb we had, it had a stove and an oven co uh, combo unit. It actually had almost two meters of counter space. It was a large condo. It was 66 square meters. That's a very large condo uh, for standards here. Uh, we also had a microwave, so we were, we were doing pretty good. Here, uh, we moved in, it had an induction cooker, one burner induction cooker, and a rice cooker, and a microwave. We've gotten some racks and things to put everything on to maximize our one meter of counter space. Okay, let's, I just looked at it, about a meter and a half of counter space. So, you know, you, you make do. Uh, you learn to adapt, you learn to overcome, and there you go. Now the houses, um, some of the houses we've looked at have had what's called a dirty kitchen. Uh, it's usually a service area behind the house or outside of the main living area of the house. And it's a counter with a sink. Some have stoves, some don't. You can put a two burner gas stove on there along with your gas cylinder. You can do your cooking outside of the main area. 
then you're not going to heat up your house and stink up your house with the smell of fish <laughs> uh, or whatever else, um, you know. So you, it varies widely, but I know that one of the things that I look for when we've been looking at houses is a kitchen and a yard. It's very hard to find both at the same time and stay within a budget, but we're still looking. That's why we're in a condo right now, renting. On the location. So if you're in a metro area, you're gonna have a smaller house for a lot more money. If you're in a provincial or rural area, you can, like I said, you can get more house, more yard, uh, probably more amenities for less money. Um, so, you know, you just gotta dis decide what kind of lifestyle you want. And we're still looking, like I said, so condos are getting to be pretty expensive around here, mainly because most of the people that rent condos, they want the convenience of, like I said, of being in a metro area, or they may be transient, uh, coming and going, and they, a lot of businesses will rent a condo or buy a condo for their workers. When they bring them in from out of the country or out of town, they have a place to stay. Um, Foreigners cannot buy land, cannot buy property here, but they can buy a condo and less your, uh, and so the, the developers are using that excuse to bring up the prices a little bit. Um, I don't prefer to live in a 60 story condo myself. We live in a five story condo, we're in the third floor. That's big enough for me. And there are, are nine buildings here in this complex. Now, one advantage though of a condo, it's very secure. Uh, we have roving security. We have two checkpoints just to get in here off of the, off the main highway. Uh, it's very quiet. Um, it's peaceful, it's secure. You don't get that necessarily in a housing development. So something to take into consideration. Now. If you are a foreigner and you're married to a Filipina, yes, you can buy a property, but it's gotta be in the Filipina's name. And that's what we'll be doing. We'll put that in Christine's name. Then um, in the eventuality that God calls me home, she will have a home to live in. So, you know, some people say, oh, don't buy one with your Filipina. You know, you're giving her all the power. You know, if I didn't trust her, I wouldn't have married her. So think about that, folks. Bureaucracy, one of my favorite subjects. So understand that barangays, uh, provinces, and government all work differently. Uh, if you're getting a marriage license, a driver's license, or other things like that, expect some bureaucracy to be involved there. Now, when we got our marriage license, there were certain uh, steps that we had to take to get the marriage license. I've covered all that in previous videos. And even though we got married on February 4th, uh, as of today, on March 16th, we're still waiting for our marriage certificate. Now, we had 10 days um, that we had to wait to get our license after we applied for it before we could get married and after the wedding, it took us two weeks to get our initial certificate from Quezon City. That was the local government unit uh, of the area where we got married and then had to go to PSA, uh, the Philippine Statistics Authority. We are still waiting for the uh, final certificate to come back from the PSA. There are things that I need to do. Uh, start my 13A uh, spouse visa, which is a permanent visa, although the first year is a, is a provisionary visa, and Christine has to sponsor me on these. But there are steps you have to take. One of the steps is you have to have your marriage certificate. Now, we're going to try and see if the NBI, that's the National Bureau of Investigation, 
again, bureaucracy. Uh, we will see if they'll take uh, the Kazon City marriage certificate. and We can start that process now. We have several different things that we have to do for me to get my 13A, uh, a list of requirements that we have to have and NBI, uh, National Bureau of, in, uh, of Investigation, is the first step. They have to give me a clearance saying that I'm not a terrorist or something else. Uh, I have to have a clean um, bill of health as far as uh, my law abidingness goes. And I've extended my visa twice since I've been here. Again, I've been here for 80 days. The first, uh, first step is you get an ex uh, a waiver on, uh, which is good for 30 days and then you can get a visa extension and this time I took 60 days because as I mentioned in a previous video if something goes wrong with the plane it can't get off the ground and it's a direct flight to LAX so if that plane can't get off the ground I may have to be waiting a day so there's that uh, I'm leaving right out the right at the end of my 30 day extension from my waiver so I figured it was easier just to get the 60 day, costs a little bit more, but if anything happens and I'm delayed for a day, I'm not going to have a B6 uh, uh, overstay. So better safe than sorry, and one of the things I've learned in the Philippines. But expect some bureaucracy. Uh, again, take your time, just don't get in a hurry. It'll all happen. Make sure you go on the websites, look at all the requirements, have all of your paperwork ready to go before you start the process. It helps. Food. <laughs> I'm kind of a picky eater when it comes to Filipino food and I'm still not a big fish eater. Um, I'll try fish. I, I'll eat a little bit of uh, uh, tilapia occasionally depending on how it's how it's prepared. And, maybe some bangus, uh, but I'm just still uh, trying new things. I'm learning new things. There are certain foods that I absolutely love. Uh, I just tried a, a new, a new food here earlier this week. Turon is, is a banana that's wrapped up in a wrapper like lumpia. Uh, it's a very thin wrapper. And then it had, uh, this one that I tried had lanka, which is jackfruit, uh, strips of that in with the banana, and it was deep fried. Yummy. I, I'm a big fan of uh, Turan now. But you never know until you try something. Some things I like, some things I'm not so big on, but you, everyone has their own taste, so you give it all a try. The worst you can do is spit it out. You've wasted the money for food. So there's plenty of Western foods available here, you know, like KFC, McDonald's, Burger King, Pizza Hut, uh, those kind of things. Um, earlier uh, this past week, we went to Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, uh, it's a Western uh, chain that's here in the Philippines. This will be the third time that we've been to Texas Roadhouse. I'll throw that little clip in from earlier this week. We're at the Estancia Mall in Pasig. Ironically, this very restaurant right here was the first restaurant that I ate at on the day that I arrived, December 30th. And now I've been here for 70 plus days. Uh, some of the family friends who now my friends also are meeting us here for dinner. Fill that in. I want to try my S24. See how that's working out. Coincidentally, that happens to be the second time I've eaten at that uh, Texas Roadhouse. Uh, we ate there on the day I landed in the Philippines, and we went there to meet some friends. And, and yeah, it's still good food. Uh, earlier, uh, let's see, a month ago, we went over to Alabang. We had a, a meetup over there with some expats, and that was at a Texas Roadhouse. Always good food. Uh, it's pretty, very similar to what you get in the West. The menu 
is slightly different. Um, there are probably more rice dishes in there than, than what you get in the U.S. And yeah, you just take it what you will. But understand, uh, if you eat Western foods, if you go out to eat a lot, or even if you get a grab and have, it, have your food delivered, uh, we do that occasionally, like Burger King or Pizza Hut. Uh, you know, we had pizza delivered back in the States. Uh, but if you do that, it's going to cost you more. So if you're on a tight budget, be aware of that. And you're probably better off eating Filipino food. It's going to cost you a lot less. But one thing is constant, no matter what you eat here in the Philippines, rice will be on the menu somewhere. Another word of advice, learn Tagalog or Visaya, depending on where you live. If you're up on Luzon, learn Tagalog. If you're in Visayas, uh, learn Visaya. Uh, it doesn't hurt uh, and it's only respectful. Now, all of your documents, uh, signs, things like that are going to be in English, but understand, uh, and just speaking for here on Luzon and even Visaya when we were there, uh, there are going to be Filipino words in some of the signs that you see and you want to know what they mean. You, know, you don't want to go into some place and find out uh, you were expecting hamburgers when it's fish house. So <laughs> be prepared for that. But like I said, it's only respectful that if you're going to live here, learn the language of whatever province, uh, whatever region you're in. Uh, I plan on taking Tagalog lessons when I get back this summer, uh, mainly because of being respectful. And although English is a known language here and it's spoken, some don't speak it as comfortably as others, uh, no matter what happens, they always revert back to their native language when they're talking in groups. So if you want to follow along with the conversation, it's important to know the language. So do the right thing. Take some lessons. It's not that expensive. It's not that hard of a language to learn. At least Tagalog's not. I haven't started and learned Visaya, but then we don't live in Visayas, uh, the central part and the southern part of, of uh, the Philippines. Um, we go to Dumaguete, we go to, uh, we went to Boracay, uh, but English was spoken everywhere, and we, we got by. So you can get by, but be respectful and learn the, learn the local language. Services. Now, medical, haircuts, nail care, uh, laundry are relatively inexpensive here compared to U.S. Now, I've got some notes here just so I can get the numbers right. So my last haircut that I got, yeah, I know there's not much hair to cut, but it does get long in the back and the sides. Uh, with the shave and a trim was 850 pesos, which is 1550 uh, US. Now that was full treatment and it was probably one of the more expensive treatments I could get. Uh, you can get by for, say, 350 pesos or even less. I, I've heard of some people getting 200 peso haircuts. Um, just a basic trim haircut in the U.S. without shave, without beard trim or anything else, it's $25 for me. That gets a little expensive. I have my own clippers at home. I trim my own hair. I'm not spending $25 for, for just a trim. But I've got just the full treatment uh, haircut. Yeah, like I said, it's 15, about 1550. Um, a few days ago, my wife and I went and had a mani pedi. Yeah, I joked about those in the past. And this time I got the foot spa, which they, yeah, I don't get into all the details, but they make sure your feet are taken well good care of. Um, it was 750 pesos, which is about 1375. It took a couple hours to do. You know, the ladies really earned their keep on that one. Um, just a manicure alone in the U.S., from what I understand, would be more than $40. So again, it, it's a lot cheaper here in the Philippines uh, for these services. 
Uh, I did a video where I went into uh, ear, uh, ear, nose, and throat specialist right after I got here. I had sinus problems that you know, was kind of bothering me. I wanted to make sure that I didn't have anything wrong. It was relatively cheap. I did a video, go back and look at that one. So medical care, uh, yeah, it could be a lot cheaper. Uh, I'm self-insured right now. And so I have to pay for that out of cash. I plan on having a reserve amount in the bank uh, after I get back here. And that is going to be just for medical emergencies, medical care, whatever. And it's a substantial amount for the Philippines. So not to worry. Now I may get uh, some kind of health insurance. Uh, there's been several that's been kicked around I'll look into those when I get back, but I'm not going to pay $179 uh, in the U.S. for Medicare that I can't use here. So the few months that I'm going to be back in the U.S., I'm going to be taking a chance. Uh, we just kind of hope that nothing happens, that I need medical care because I don't have insurance in the U.S. And just think of it that way. When I get back here, I'll be self-insured because I can take care of those things here. In the U.S., you're not going to be able to take care of it. Uh, not unless you hit a lottery somewhere or you're, you've had several people give you inheritances. Then maybe without insurance. But here, it's a lot cheaper and a lot more affordable. And uh, earlier I mentioned grab rights. I've got, again, my notes here just so I can uh, get the numbers right. A grab ride for us is costing between 300 to 450 pesos. Uh, we have had some that were only 200 pesos, but 300 uh, pesos, about 550, 450 pesos, about $8. It depends on the distance, if we have to pick somebody up and we'll drop them off, or if we have to go to several locations. Um, you know, just all little circumstances. And why not let somebody else deal with the with the traffic and, and the risk of having an accident? Just remember, as a foreigner, if you get in an accident, no matter whose fault it is, it's your fault. So sometimes it's, it's a lot less risky to just get a grab. Uh, now there are other public transportations. You can take a trike or you can take a uh, jeepney. We rode a trike several times. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, here in the condo, we have a golf cart. It's like a six passenger golf cart. And we use that to get down to the main road because the hypermarket is right next to the entrance here. So we can go do our shopping, 20 pesos a piece. They'll take us down there. Uh, that's what, little, <laughs> about a dime <laughs> a piece. Uh, it'll take us down to the main road. We just walk over to the hypermarket. We do our grocery shopping, come back, catch the golf cart, back to the condo. Because it's probably a half a mile uh, up, the, up the driveway just to get to our condo from the main road. Uh, we're well off the main road. We're secluded back in here. That's why it's quiet and peaceful. So, you know, you, there's, there's other alternatives. Jeepneys. I probably won't ride one of those. <laughs> They're kind of the nemesis of traffic here in the in the Philippines. And some of those jeepney drivers get a little bit crazy and a little bit wild. And I, I, I think that maybe the adventure seekers uh, would want to spend their 12 pesos on, on a jeepney drive, uh, ride. Uh, it might be 20 pesos. I don't know. I'm not going to find out. But, you know, if I have to, I'll take a trike. Uh, we've done that several times. It's not so bad. Um, usually just when we're in the village, because we can, we can take the golf cart down to the main road. We can walk about 50 meters, cross over uh, Felix Avenue and get into the uh, village east. That's the uh, uh, village where my in-laws live. And then we'll catch a trike and I don't know, it's like 50 pesos or something like that, a dollar you know, to get us to mom's house. And then we can walk out of there, grab a trike back up to Felix and walk across the road and about another 50 meters um, up to the entrance to our condo complex, another 20 pesos. You can see transportation can be very cheap. 
Um, don't have to drive, don't have to worry about traffic. So there's always alternatives. So what are some of my takeaways on my 80 days here in the Philippines? And again, I've only got about 10 days left and I'm flying home. And here's an observation for you. You notice the curtains are different? <laughs> yeah, we changed those. Uh, we'd had the yellow curtains on before. Uh, this condo came with several changes of curtains and we've gone through and made the whole place gray. It's a little bit better in the daytime. Uh, it doesn't let as much light in. And, uh, at nighttime, uh, there's a light above my head here outside. And it, doesn't shine in so bright. So, uh, some of the takeaways on my 80 days here, I'll tell you if you'll hit the like and subscribe buttons, <laughs> hit the notification bell too. Okay, I've done my uh, I've done my little begging. Traffic in Metro Manila uh, or any of the large metros, uh, Cebu, Davao, uh, some of the others is always going to be worse than in a rural or provincial area. But that's to be expected. There are a lot of people that come to the cities and there's a lot of people that's got to move around in the city. So traffic is always going to be worse. I prefer to live in a medium sized city. Uh, I don't think I'm going to live out in the provinces. I'm going to live in a city of some sort, so why not make it a medium-sized city, uh, one that has all of the amenities you need, uh, so shopping, hospitals, uh, medical care, uh, movie theaters, whatever you're going to need, uh, fast food, whatever. It's all going to be available, but the traffic will be less. In some of the more modern uh, metro areas, they've actually put in good infrastructure. There's a place over in Cavite, it's called New Lancaster City. Um, we were looking at that uh, because the owner of our last Airbnb, that's where he lives and he was talking to us about this and he's an expat, married to a Filipina. Uh, they've been married for like 15 years, uh, met their kids and everything, great family. Um, but he was telling me about New Lancaster City in Cavite. Geez, they, they got like 15 meter wide roads. Uh, nobody parks on the street. No jeepneys are allowed in, in the, the city. Uh, very clean, uh, very modern uh, by Western standards. Uh, it was a beautiful place. We actually looking at some of the properties there, but uh, we're also looking up in Angeles. Uh, but not Angeles City itself necessarily. Um, that's got a bad rap. There are supposedly a lot of expats up there, but I haven't seen any. Uh, there are other foreigners from other countries. Uh, we spent New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day at an Airbnb condo uh, right across from Marquee Mall, uh, right next to uh, the City Hall. I did a video on that, take a look. Uh, we had some Koreans that were yelling up and down the halls. They were being quite noisy. Young kids, okay, so not necessarily in the nationality, uh, more the age demographics, so <laughs> be prepared for that. Um, but there are a lot of uh, foreigners that live in Angeles City, uh, Angeles City, uh, you pronounce it how you want. Um, uh, there are other towns around uh, uh, around there. Just, let's just call it Pampanga province. Uh, it's north of Manila. We were looking at Sindalan, uh, Bacalor, uh, Mabalacat. Uh, I think Mabal I don't know. I can't ever pronounce that one right. Tarlac. Uh, some of the surrounding towns around Angeles. So we're going up there this week. We're going to take a look at some places. I might do a video on it. Uh, brand new houses, brand new townhouses. We're looking at all kinds of different possibilities. Rent own, buy outright, uh, rent, you know, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities. One thing it but is, I, we've got to be out of here by August and I'm going to have a very narrow window 
when I get back, if I can get back in the middle of June after my great liquidation at home, we've got to have a place, we got to have a, uh, some place that we know we're going to go. So um, we want to get as much uh, eyeballs on different areas, uh, feet on the ground in different areas as possible. We've already been looking around a lot of different places. I'm constantly on Facebook looking at uh, properties. So uh, to rent, to buy, to rent to own, uh, a lot of different possibilities. But one thing is for sure, when we get back, I really, really like to get out of Metro Manila, uh, be moved before August, before my stepdaughter has to start her new uh, school year. Uh, transferring schools is not easy in the Philippines. It's pretty difficult or else we would have already been someplace else. But I really don't want to spend another year here uh, after our uh, lease runs out here on this condo. Uh, great place, great people and everything, but there are too many things uh, that I've just covered, uh, like traffic and, and things like that. But, Eh, I'm just not as happy as what I would be in a smaller town, I think. I'm a small town kind of guy, and that's what I'm looking at. Now, it may not happen. We may stay here. Who knows? But I know it's more expensive to live here, so I'm thinking of my budget and trying to uh, live within my budget easier. Now, the Philippines is still a great place to live. I love the people. I love the, the weather. Uh, <laughs> coming from a place that gets winter and a lot of snow and it's very dry, I thought, geez, when I get over here, the heat and the humidity is going to kill me, but it really hasn't. Um, it's pretty temperate. It's been really nice. Uh, of course, we're in an El Nino year. We haven't had hardly any rain at all in the 80 days that I've been here. It's been cloudy lately. And the wind's starting to change. Um, in the winter time, um, the wind blows out of the east. Uh, that's usually your drier time when the wind starts blowing out of the west, and it's usually around March. Um, and I've noticed a couple of days now, I've, I've, we've had the wind start blowing out of the west a little bit. Then it'll switch and it'll blow out of the east again. So it's the beginning of the change of the seasons. Pretty soon it's going to be the rainy season. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be humid. But I haven't really noticed that. Uh, the humidity be up around 70, 75%. I don't feel it. And I'm coming from uh, a land that 15% humidity is about a normal. So uh, right now, we've been getting snow and things at home. Uh, we've been in the 90s here. Uh, it's been like 91, 92 degrees for the high, mid 70s at night. It doesn't bother me too bad. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. and. Uh, I think I said this one, as soon as I got off the airplane, it felt like home. It still does. So I love the Philippines. Um, I'm going to be here. And other than the things that I've mentioned above, um, which really aren't too bad of negatives, I think this will be a very good place for me to live. Another thing, there's only been two days since I've been here out of 80 that I've worn my sunglasses. My eyes are very sensitive to the sun. Back home, I wear my sunglasses as soon as I walk out of the house. Here, I don't need the sunglasses. Why? Maybe because I'm farther away from the sun being at sea level. Uh, maybe just the tropical sun, the way it hits. I don't know, because at my house, at 5,000 feet of elevation, uh, over 3,100 meters above sea level, I'm closer to the sun. It's really intense, so. Yeah, I only wore my sunglasses two days. Go figure. <laughs> hey, my sunglasses may last me for the rest of my life, right? <laughs> All right, I hope uh, this wasn't too boring. I hope it was informative. Uh, this is what I've seen for the past 80 days here in the Philippines. 10 more days, I gotta catch that big white bird heading back to the east. <sighs> Not looking forward to it, but we'll try and do a liquidation as soon as possible. Uh, when we go up to Pampanga this week, I'll try and get some videos in, a little bit of vlogging. It's what we're looking at for houses, uh, townhouses, whatever else. We'll catch you on the next one.
Y'all be good. Love y'all.